guys presented before a live internet audience. Yeah! Hello, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night, or I should say, good evening. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. This episode of Ju- Jupiter at Night, it's about a few things, really. Um, we're going to tell you about bionic eyes. That's cool. Uh, we're going to tell you about a possible cure to cancer. That's really cool. A really likely HIV vaccine. That's even cooler. And then we're going to end the whole episode with a review of Inception right in your face. I right. guess that's going to be cool. Yeah, that's going to be all right. Let's kick off this first one. This is we're going to do a medicine, future medicine. It's kind of like technology, body, healthy, yeah, junk. Wow, that sounds compelling. <laughs> <laughs> healthy body junk. All the, all on this episode of Jupiter Night. The first one up really grabbed our attention uh, because well, it's kind of disgusting. Prepare yourselves. You've been warned. Boom! Look at that. Ah! Eyeball implants, telescopic eye implants approved. By the FDA. Now they've been they've been actually ready when for. When you look uh, at something, does it go? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. It is funny, right? Because you only have one in one eye, and the yeah. other one you have to leave for uh, like um, what's it called when you have to perceive Depth things? Perception. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you have to perceive things. Oh, like words, depthily or depth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a few other interesting things about this, right? Yeah. What do we got? Well, it, it was actually invented to combat macular degeneration, which is like, it affects a lot of old people. Yeah. Um, basically, people over about 50 start to be very prone to this. It's when the center of the back of your eye starts to go out. I know, it's sad. And uh, so you can, still, you, you can still basically function. You have a lot of peripheral vision, but you can't recognize people's faces, and you can't read, and you can't drive, obviously. So Right. That's the big thing with this, right, is they're talking about it's hopefully going to give the people the ability to recognize faces again. It's not working so well. I mean, most of these things that are like major, right. okay, first of all, it costs $15,000 just yep. for the equipment, and then you have to pay for the surgery and everything to have it installed. I think, I think though, they're hoping uh, if they, with the FDA approval, that for people over 70, they're going to be able to get it covered by Medicare. Well, yeah, I mean... That's probably why the price is so high to begin with, because I don't want to go on that rant. Yeah, <laughs> but exactly. Um, it works only about 75% of the time if it works at all, too. Yeah. Um, but if it does work, you can go from a really bad case of like almost no vision to a moderate case of no vision. You see, if I was going to spend that much and only have a three-quarters chance of it actually working, there, I and, would want it to really work. And then in the three-quarters chance, if it does work, it's... It's only yeah, it's moderately good, but then again, if you had vision all your life and as you got into your older years, you could no longer see. You might be willing to do whatever it takes to see again. You know, so you never know. Maybe. But if it gets covered by insurance, then that would be a very good thing for a lot of people. Well, it's approved by the FDA, so hopefully That's this awesome. will actually be available to more people in yeah. the near future. Yep, uh, it's interesting too because after they implant it, there's a bunch of sur- a bunch of Therapy. therapy they have to put people through because they have to teach you how to oh, operate with a um, telescope in one eye and none to, in the other. I have heard they also have to replace the cornea, and they didn't say with what, but it's because it, the uh, the implant itself is too large for most Yeah, and it has eyes. to kind of sit over the area that's still not totally damaged. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's pretty wild. Pretty wild. And, and, which you know, means probably if somebody got one of these, you could see it. I guess. Like if you were this close to them or something. Dude, right? what the hell is wrong with your eye? <laughs> <laughs> you got something on your right, right? Oh. It's, it's in your, oh. it's right there. No, between, right. What if I have perfect vision? Can I get one, like you're saying, to, and then like see through walls? Yeah. Let's talk about this next thing. This is another huge uh, advancement um, in medicine that mm-hmm. is looking extremely positive, and that is a major breakthrough in the quest for an HIV vaccine. This is really recent stuff. I think this the papers just came out last Thursday as we're recording this mm-hmm. on a Monday. I should point out, though, that um, you know most people are talking about seeking a cure for AIDS. Um, this wouldn't this this is a obviously vaccine. be a yeah, cure. This is a vaccine. But, you know, um, when vaccines for polio and smallpox were discovered, I mean, you barely ever, yeah. within probably a decade, it right. was pretty much worldwide cured. I mean, sucks to be the people that already had it. Obviously. Yeah, you got to weed through all the infected. Yeah. But then once once those people are weeded out of the herd... Sorry yeah. if anybody lost anybody to polio. Uh, or see, smallpox. Even the concept of that's humorous, right? That you would have somebody die from polio or smallpox because it's so uncommon it in, really is in the developed world. Yeah, developed yeah. countries, right. Uh, but HIV. That's everywhere. That's, that's, that's uh, yeah. Some places in Africa, I've heard that like 
over 50%, maybe even like higher numbers, like ridiculously high numbers. Are you kidding me? Of the population has HIV. Are you pulling my stick right now? No, it's wow. really bad in undeveloped countries. That is too bad. Stupid bad. Here's what's interesting. The origins of this vaccine that they're looking at actually come from the antibodies being produced by an HIV infected patient, a 60 year old man. Well, that's usually how vaccines are usually created one of two ways. They either take a dead virus. Right. And force your body to create antibodies for it. Like or the they flu take shot. the antibodies that have already been created for it and adapt them to well, it. And they don't know why his body is producing uh, uh, these antibodies. And they say no. if they can figure out what's unlocked his body to start producing these antibodies, they could probably unlock it yeah, everywhere. At the genetic level. But if nothing else, they can, they can look at his antibodies and try to reproduce those. This is the part I found really interesting, though, is that HIV is a very um, mutable virus, is what they call it. It mutates very easily. But they've actually been able to pinpoint a portion of the virus that almost never mutates. Oh. And that was a very recent discovery that is made uh, up until just a year ago. Previous attempts uh, only had a, a cure or a, a prevention rate of like under 30%. Yeah. As low as like 4%, I think, there three years ago. There was even just a breakthrough in Thailand just recently uh, that uh, only managed to achieve a 30% to 40% best case results. Uh, this this vaccine's, you know, the people are th thinking possibly a 90% mm -hmm. uh, vaccination result. Could be huge. That could change the world. Are you, is that going to put you back on the market? Are you going to start sleeping around again? I know you've been holding off with all the <laughs> HV stuff, HIV stuff. So Right, it scares me. I'm not, not going to go out and right. catch the HIV. That's... <laughs> You don't want to get the HIV, dude. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about cancer. Some major things are being developed in the world this is of cancer research. such an uplifting research. show, isn't it? It is. This is really well, okay, good. Okay, yeah. It's the future of medicine. Kind of downer subjects, but in a good light. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the cancer one, too, especially because I think everybody probably knows somebody who suffered from cancer. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so. this is this is an this is an awesome development for cancer. They have to they have figured out that a certain protein structure helps cancer stays what they claim stay essentially immortal. Like they have the ability to continually regenerate themselves without wearing out. In most, uh, let me try to just break this down into layman's terms. In most cells, when they divide, they lose a protein off the end of one of their right. um, dingles. Cancer, <laughs> cancer doesn't. Uh, I don't know if it's because the proteins are better formed or what, but when they um, replicate themselves, each one is just as healthy as the original. They uh, apparently are uh, either taking advantage of or there's an enzyme present that prevents the breakdown of this protein. Right. And uh, scientists think that if they can maybe figure out this enzyme or something like that, they might be able to cause normal cancer cells in someone else's body to start uh, breaking down because this little protein that keeps them from doing that, this little tip that breaks off, mm -hmm. uh, right now does not break off. But with the protein gone, it might. Well, the and big then thing cancer would essentially die like a regular cell. The big thing, I mean, it would make tumors much more easier to treat, but it would also make it so that yes. cancer would be much less likely to mastocize. That's when it enters the bloodstream <laughs> right. and spreads throughout the body. Because once it was thinned out in the bloodstream, it would die. This is interesting. So uh, I'll just read a little bit here from IO9. Uh, cancer cells are effectively immortal, unaffected by the process that causes regular cells to stop replicating and die. But now we've found a protein that gives them immortality. We found that protein and maybe even a way to switch it off. Every time a normal cell reproduces, it loses a little part of its protective tip uh, near the uh, edge of the DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, these bits are known as uh, telomeres? T T telomeres? Telomeres? Yeah, it's a hard word. And, uh, once Sounds like a dinosaur, though. Once they've, uh, once they've become too short, these tips, uh, they uh, fall off and the cell stops reproducing and mm -hmm. dies. Cancer cells, however, are able to prevent their DNA strands from losing this little tip, and it effectively causes them to be immortal. So you knock this little tip off, you, you're knocking cancer out. Yep. And they're, they're getting closer and closer every day. I also wanted to point out that this, was, this research is being done at, right here at Washington State University. Yeah, buddy. Go Washington! <laughs> Washington State brings you wonderful shows like Jupiter at Night and possibly A, a Cure to cure Cancer. For cancer. Boy, that's a win-win. Yeah. So um, this last well, story... The thing that, no, oh, I'm, wanna, I'm still curious oh, okay, about this right. because actually somebody asked this in the chat room as well. And uh, if we know what causes cancer cells to be immortal, can we just make other cells be immortal? Hmm. But then wouldn't all cells be cancer cells? Well, if they're all cancer, <laughs> are they bad? I don't know, dude. you got to ask Wolverine. That's not a question I can answer. It might be a curse to live forever. Yeah, exactly. Unless you've got claws. Yeah, and, and awesome healing. Well, I mean, if the cells are immortal, right? Yeah, that's true. If you, but you also have to have that thing that makes them repair fast. Oh, right. Right? you got to have probably not just the telomeres. That's some sort of extra super protein enzyme that he's got. Yeah.
All right, anything else on this story before we move on? Because this last one, i got to be honest with you, There's I'm a little nervous notes, about talking about it. Let's move on. Okay. Check out the show notes over at <coughs> Jupiter Broadcasting. Let's, you know, uh, it is actually pretty interesting. We put a couple extra notes in there, too, that mm-hmm. uh, I think people might find interesting. All right. Now, I was, Lay it on be me. honest with you, a little nervous about talking about this next story. Well, it's going to be easy, I think, for us because we're professionals. Right. We're absolute professionals. Uh, Consummate professionals. Scientists have determined that the human sperm gene <laughs> has not changed <laughs> 600 million years. Yeah. It has not changed. <laughs> Actually, it's not just humans either. All sperm. Right? This element, all like this code it's, and all yeah, male I don't know sperm. Yeah, pronounced, but it's some sort of universal gene yeah. found in all um, male reproductive Literally fluids. from flies to humans. Everything. So, first of all, that's crazy. Second of all, flies have sperm. <laughs> and then third of all, I was trying to figure out the math on how they figured out that it hasn't changed for 60 million years. 600 million 600 years. million years. Wow. Did they get No, really it's 600 old, million. Did I they just, get really old cells? And well, here's know? here's my thing. Now, find somebody's old Kleenex. And this is this is the advantage to having a nightly show on the internet is you're able to bring these inf- bits of information to, information together. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. If you are an early Jupiter night watcher, you probably remember a story about a certain King Tut's missing penis. Oh. Now, how are you going to know sperm is 600 million years old hasn't changed unless you get your hands on some, some old sperm? You think that King Tut has a missing penis? <laughs> These guys know about old sperm. I'm just putting two and two together. That's not 600 million years old, though. I know, but you do need some sort of right. He's There's like a flaw in your logic. Well, there. well, no, because you've got to go back. So you, so you got to go. So you got to keep checking at major points. Right. So, like, so you check the 1800s. You check World I War believe. II, you, if Jupiter and I had, had the resources available to them and we continued this investigation, we'd probably find an entire strains of missing penises <laughs> in the entire history of, of, of all of this. And it probably all ties back to these researchers and the fact that they have uncovered, thankfully, that bolu, whatever you call it, bio? B-O-U-L-E, yeah, it sounds like bile, that's mm-hmm. bad, um, it, it's in everything from flies to roosters, sea anemones to humans. It's and this, rainbow trout. It's this sperm gene... That has remained the same for basically ever. And why scientists, why this blows scientists' minds is one of the things that changes the quickest and the most frequently in all species across the board is our sexual reproduction genes because that's extremely aggressive. Yeah, and it's extremely important to the continuation of the species. You've yeah. got to be the best sexer. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> that's right. So it's interesting that it's gone this long and, and this aspect hasn't changed, so they don't know what it does. But the extension of that logic is it's probably extremely critical. Yeah. That or it's your appendix, and it doesn't matter at all. Could be the gene Who for knows? your appendix. Who knows? Um, now, the other thing that they're working on, though, is that this particular scientist that's heading this experiment is saying that using this, you might be able to target the bully of specific species and eradicate their ability to reproduce. Yeah, yeah, it's like a uh, with like a biological weapon. It's like it's like the secret ingredients you need to sterilize an entire species. Now, he's talking about doing it to things like major parasites that have uh, evolved because of human interference, like you, you, overpopulation and, and pollution and things like that. But if that thing is present in I know, everybody dude, I know. and they put out a biological weapon to sterilize everything that doesn't that mean the whole world? Here's the thing. Doesn't that mean that we're going to be living in whenever the children of the universe? Whenever you take a scientist and you take something that involves semen or your junk, it always leads to this kind of stuff. <laughs> and I don't know what it is because those two things would seem... Genocide? <laughs> it does. It's always this weird stuff of like, well, I'm a penis scientist and I can take out the entire world. he's a world. gynecologist. Why is he doing this anyway? I yeah, because he's a gynecologist. I know about these guys. They want to. They, gynecologists are in it to to win it, and they want to take us all out because <laughs> then they can just rule it from their gynecology offices. It's the perfect you think thing. He's already got the cure. Oh yeah, dude. It's like this. It, it, <laughs> it, it'd be like a computer. It'd be like an IT guy like myself releasing a virus to just wipe out all the computers, so you no longer have to take care of any computers. You wipe out all the humans. Hey, your work's a lot easier. Yeah, and you know, maybe you it's keep a, a few. You keep a few with the vaccine. I think I'm going to go home and change my genes. Yeah, you get probably should. Of, get rid of the bully. Yeah, it's good to rotate those once a week anyway. I don't I don't need the bully anymore cuz it can it's bad for me apparently. Yeah. Well, it's apparently the secret ingredient to insta death or at least sterilization. <laughs> okay. Well, so uh, this week, uh, this weekend came out and uh, last <coughs> Thursday we previewed Inception. Mm-hmm. And uh, the J man here got a chance to go see it. And I, I want to know what you thought. It's gotten a lot of good responses. It has gotten a lot of good reviews. Now, I'm going to come out right up front and say that 
I'm probably not going to be quite as glowing as the rest of the internet has been about this. I'm I did, a little nervous. To I be did honest. enjoy the movie. Um, it was it was really fun, and I would encourage people to go see it in the theater. But I think that a lot of people are kind of overblowing it. I never like it when you start with a uh, well. It had a nice personality. <laughs> no, it was it was better. Than All that. right, tell me your thoughts. Um, my major point is just that a lot of people are painting this as a very smart movie, a very brainy action film. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, it just really isn't. I mean, it's about as brainy as a good comic book. Really? That's about it. I mean, which is good. I mean, comic books are good, right? Yeah, well, absolutely. So, I mean, but you don't go to see a high budget movie with the expectation of that, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, they they do this whole highbrow thing of trying to cover up the fact that it there's no science at all involved by talking about psychology and dream states and shared dreaming. And right. It's so the idea is he can enter people's minds and find out their secrets via their yeah, dreams. Yeah, th- that's the whole premise, basically. Um, he learned how to do this from somebody. It sounds like his father-in-law or something. Uh, and he became a thief because something went wrong. I'm not going to give that part of the story away. Okay. Um, but he became a thief that steals ideas, ideas from people's dreams. But now he's been hired by somebody to implant an, an idea Ooh. in somebody's mind. That's the difference between extraction, which is stealing the, the ideas, right. and inception, which is placing the idea in somebody's mind. Gotcha. So it's it's a very interesting premise. I just don't. It's not as smart as everybody is um, making it out to be. Plus, Leo DiCaprio is not a very good actor. Oh <gasps> snaps! I thought he was pretty good in Aviator. You know he he's decent. There are worse. Nick Cage. You know he came out with a movie this weekend, <laughs> The Sorcerer's Jesus. Apprentice. Again, hitting it with the with the Nick Cage hate. <laughs> Two episodes in a row. Take that Nick Cage to the ribs. I don't know. I don't mind. I'm not Mr. Leonardo DiCaprio over here. I'm not going to try this, to defend this him. This role but. could have been played just as well by Keanu Reeves. And whoa, that's pl- that's saying something, isn't it? Whoa, that is the most hate I've heard about this. <laughs> that's whoa. Uh, now people in the chat room they liked Inception. I don't hate it. It's a good movie. It yeah. really is a good movie. I just don't think that it deserves quite as much hype oh. and quite okay. as much love as okay. a lot of people are, are heaping fair, onto dude. it. That's fair. Um, so I think it was a very difficult premise, though, to pull off. Were you able to follow along? Did, and did it, it, yeah. And even, it seems like know, a really I heady with thing. my mom and dad, which are, you know, my dad is a very, he likes dumb, stupid movies. And even he was able to follow along with it. So you That's know. a nice thing to say about your dad. <laughs> Well, it means that the movie is not quite as smart as everybody is. Oh, okay, it to okay, be. I see what I see what your point was. Yeah, because sometimes with those dream Besides, movies, my dad doesn't know how to use the internet. He'll never see this. <laughs> the internet. <laughs> uh, it's those, that's that series of tubes, isn't it? Those, but those kinds of movies can be good. But yeah, it was sold as like extremely okay. Should, should I a go see it? Very cerebral experience. Should I go? Yeah. No, it's a good movie. Just don't pay full price. Pay, is it a matinee movie or is it still a full price movie? You know, uh, it's a full price movie. All right, that's not too bad. It is enjoyable. Okay. I'm not going to downplay that. It's a good good blockbuster, and the visuals are fantastic. Yeah. I, the only visual I've seen so far is uh, of the city folding up in that the trailer. That whole sequence is just phenomenal. Did, yeah, it that looks amazing. That is actually the only sequence, I think, in the movie where they actually kind of got dreams right. The rest of it, uh, maybe it's just a personal thing. I, I've done a lot of looking, uh, studying about like lucid dreaming and, and nightmare states and, and dream interpretation, so I... This is kind of up my alley. Gotcha. As far so maybe that's why I didn't quite enjoy it so much. It didn't really respect the source material as much it's as you wanted. It's kind of like it kind of bothered me almost as much as when in Star Trek they got the science all wrong about black holes. Right. You know that's kind of how off-putting it was. You know they're not respecting the source material that they're driving the story from. Right. It's, there's no science involved here. It's a good story. It's actually I'd probably call it a great story. But you can't really go to the theater expecting to get scienced. No. But you can. Not really. But you know that does drive me crazy because they make these budgets. They have these budgets that are just millions of dollars mm-hmm. and they can't pencil in a 5000 15000 whatever it is, a one line item for science consultation. Well, it looks like they whatever. kind of tried to some in this movie. Ah. They, they did shoehorn some rules into the dream state and stuff okay. like that. But that also made the beginning of the movie a little bit long, a little bit dry, a little bit exposition. Oh, they had to set all that up. They did it well by putting it all inside of an action wrapper. You know, the whole movie is a heist movie wrapped inside a psychological thriller, wrapped inside a sci-fi, big-budget, visual extravaganza. That sounds awesome. It is. Okay. But if you, let, if you, can't, dis, if you can't turn off the brain fully, you're yeah, going to have gonna some Yeah, you're going to have to turn off your brain okay. and just enjoy it for what it is because it's a great movie. And we know, you're watching this show, we already know you have the ability to do that, so Absolutely. we're not worried about you guys at all. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know you're just waiting for us to finish so you can turn it back on. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why don't we do that? All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching this episode of Jupiter at Night. Now, I wanted to mention uh, we've got a couple of things coming up. First of all, the first episode of Brian Lunduk's Jupiter Files mm. just came out. Presented in glorious black and white. That's right. Well, I like it. It's really very, very it's a th- visually it's, it's stylish. It's a style. It's a, cho- it's a choice mm-hmm. to be retro. Uh, head, head over to jupiterbroadcasting.com. Look for that. Also, coming out, and we'll keep you updated tomorrow. But the plan is, depending on if everything works out with RSS feedwise, the Northwest Goofballs, a football podcast, will be launching on Wednesday. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's football right now, and then it'll be basketball later on. I think that's kind of the idea, yeah. As the football season ramps up, it's going to go every other week. Once football season hits, it's weekly. And then when football season ends, the show is likely going to transition to a uh, basketball based show during that season. Uh, and the the show is done by uh, Justin from Legend of the Stone Dial and uh, Ryan and Dan, two new guys who you've never met before, and these guys freaking love football. Yeah, I I honestly, I wish I knew more about football, because I've sat in and listened to a couple of their podcasts, and I'm like, you guys know what you're talking about. It's funny. This is interesting to listen to. Yeah, it's it, because we I don't know anything about football, and I just try to pick up like through osmosis little things. Uh-huh. I have picked up a couple of things. I've, <laughs> we've got the first two episodes uh, already shot, and it's all audio, so I shouldn't use the term shot, but uh, it's already recorded, and I love them both. I So I'm excited for it. That'll be yeah. the Northwest Goofballs. Oh, we'll give you an update uh, maybe in tomorrow or even Wednesday's show how that's progressing. Okay, everyone. Well, anything else before we wrap up? No. All right, there you have it. There's also the form. You can go over to jupitercolony.com. I said no. Oh, okay. What about the Facebook? Okay, facebook.com slash jupiterbroadcast. Okay, I think that's it, right? No. No. (laughs) In fact, we're planning to do a live Stoke gameplay this weekend. That's true. So keep watching the Facebook. That's where we schedule it. Yeah. Uh, Yep. Uh, Keep an eye out for that. It'll probably be coming up this weekend. Okay, everyone. Well, until tomorrow night, thanks for watching, and we'll see you then.